Good morning. My name is Barb Malera. I'm part of the team at Harvesting History Heirlooms. We're an heirloom horticultural company that specializes in heirloom seeds and heirloom bulbs and heirloom uh, sets and tubers and uh, classic gardening tools. Today we're going to be talking about the kind of soil that you want to put into your containers. And before you now shut off the video, let me tell you that the experience that we have with soil and containers comes from a project we've been working on since 2004. During the, la the next 16 years, we've planted three times a year over 100 containers. So we now have more than 4,200 plantings from which to draw conclusions. And at this point, we think we know a fair amount about planting things in containers. But what you start with when you're planting things in containers is soil. And today we want to talk about the soil mix that we find optimum for planting things in containers. The first and maybe only thing you should remember from this video is it's not wise to buy prepared soil mixes. You're much better off and it's much less expensive to mix your own soil. What you're going to start with is just topsoil that you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's or pretty much any garden center. It comes in 40 pound bags. It's the cheapest soil you can purchase. Or if you're brave, and we consider ourselves to be brave, we use crummy backyard soil and that seems to work fine. The soil is the base of your soil mix. The next thing you want to, cons want to add is some organic matter. And the best organic matter you can add to this soil mix is to use peat moss. Peat moss is easily purchased again at Home Depot or Lowe's. That is providing you with the organic matter. And finally, what you need in your soil mix <clears throat> is nutrients that you can't get anyplace else. Micronutrients, um, as well as your normal nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash or potassium. That comes from things like dehydrated cow manure. Again, you can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's or if you are composting, compost is an extraordinarily rich source, especially of micronutrients, but also of nitrogen and potassium and phosphorus. The thing you need to be careful of with your compost is that the major ingredient in compost is nitrogen. So if you're growing root vegetables, you don't so much want nitrogen as you do the potassium and the phosphorus. So let's, one more time, soil is the basis, and if you don't have crummy backyard soil, then go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get the top soil, which is the least expensive soil you can purchase. Then you're going to add organic matter by mixing in peat moss, and finally you are going to add a source of micronutrients as well as primarily nitrogen and then potassium and then phosphorus by compost or dehydrated manure. Those are the three ingredients in your soil mix. Okay, now comes the secret harvesting history soil mix gained from over 4,200 plantings over 16 years. What we do is a mix that consists of 60% soil, and then 20% peat moss and 20% compost. So if you're not good at percentages, let's look at it this way. This is a container. So I'm gonna put six of these containers in my pot. That was one, this is two, This is three. See, I can count to six. This is four. Five. Six. OK. 
okay? That's, now our soil mix is 60% soil. Then we're going to do 20% peat moss. Remember, that gives you some organic matter. And to get 20%, all we need is two, two of these containers. And then finally, we need those micronutrients and the nitrogen, as well as the potassium and the phosphorus. And this we're going to get from dehydrated cow manure, dehydrated manure, um, cooked manure if you live near a cow farm or you live like a dairy farm or you live near a horse farm. But, and if you compost. So, we did 20% or two peat mosses, and now we're going to do, and I only got about half in here, okay, we're going to do 20, uh, there's the rest in that first one, so one, here we go, two containers of our compost but you can also use dehydrated cow manure. So, we did six containers of soil, two containers of peat, and two containers of compost. And this makes a terrific soil mix for containers. Now, some of you are saying, well, no, why can't I just go to the store and buy a nice soil mix, you know, one that has already has lots of fertilizer in it or one that already has uh, a, a moisture retaining capability. The reason that you want to stay away from those soil mixes is that most of them are really too light to withstand sustained container growing. You need a heavier soil for containers but you need a soil that is going to drain. Remember that, the two things. You need a heavy soil so that when breezes or thunderstorms come by and rattle the living daylights out of the top growth of the plants in your container, that the soil is heavy enough so that the roots, those precious little roots, do not get too damaged by heavy wind damage. That's why you want to have something that works very well at keeping the roots stable in the face of heavy winds. So once again, our soil mix is six of these, two of the peat, two of the compost, and voila, we have a great container soil mix. I hope you've learned a little bit about soil for containers today. I heartily encourage you to go to our website which is www.harvesting-history.com. That website has one of the largest collections of heirloom seeds, heirloom bulbs, dahlias, lilies, begonias, elephant ears that you can find on any website in this country. It is a treasure to really be enjoyed especially on days when you have to stay inside for long periods of time. So please, visit our website, see if there are things that are going to help you realize your dreams as gardeners. And remember, good soil is the basis for good container gardening.